India, China. Uh, well, the fact is that ties have seen a bit of a thaw in the last couple of uh, weeks. Uh, there was also comments coming in from uh, the foreign minister that 75% of the issues seem to have been resolved. But in the backdrop of that, uh, the senior commanders uh, of the Indian Army are set to meet in Sikkim. The very first time that a meeting will be held near the line of actual control. What's the signaling? What's the messaging that the Indian Army is, is giving to its counterpart in China. Remember, 75% have been resolved, not 100%. Most importantly, this, this, this meeting isn't happening, in fact, in two phases. Phase one is to happen right now, which is 10th and 11th of October. Second phase will be on the 28th and 29th of October. The idea is to figure out capacity building, operational issues, and human resources, essentially identifying if there is any gaps in terms of uh, the Indian Army's preparedness when it comes to handling the China threat. Uh, let's quickly, let, let's quickly also now get in uh, uh, the guests this evening to talk more about this uh, big story. Let's uh, first get in Ambassador, uh, Ambassador Shashank to uh, former foreign secretary and we also have Gunjan Singh uh, to uh, talk more about this. Uh, Ambassador Shashank, I want to start with you, sir. The fact is that, uh, as I said, 75% may have been resolved, 100% is not resolved. The Indian Army still needs to prepare because the adversary is still very much there on the border. China has ramped up its presence significantly in the last couple of years, since 2020. And as the onset of winter is there, ahead of that, India and the Indian Army needs to prepare. But how do you see this, the messaging, the signaling, the fact that it's sign uh, Sikkim and the fact that it's very close for the first time to the line of actual control? Well, China is an important Asian country, so we have to keep that in mind. And as our army chief has said that the situation on the border with China is stable but tense. So therefore, we have to remain careful, prepare ourselves fully and give signals of the right kind to the Chinese that while we are willing to uh, discuss with them all the pending issues, at the same time, we have to remain quite well prepared to protect our interests. And I think the Chinese uh, also uh, know that India would like to be friendly with the Asian, other Asian countries. So it's not just a question of China and their bilateral relations where they can muscle in, but also a question that all the uh, Asian countries uh, are negotiating among themselves. They are talking to each other and Chinese have to uh, cut down their muscle flexing in the area. I think therefore, uh, what I would say that Indian uh, commanders, army commanders are giving the right signal to the uh, Chinese people and Chinese army that, well, while we are willing to work out some uh, peaceful solutions, but that should be uh, taken into account the positions of both the countries, India completely, full, fully into account. In fact, uh, in fact, uh, as I read it, uh, the messaging is very clear that India is prepared. The talks may continue. Thaw is good to have. But the fact is we are ready, we are prepared, and we will continue to be so. Kunjit Singh, uh, in terms of the messaging this uh, to China, at a time when parallelly talks are happening, at a time when efforts are being made to get that thaw in to make continued progress, how do you see this? Uh, good evening, Gauri. Uh, as uh, Ambassador Shashank has already uh, mentioned, that obviously it's a good posturing, that we are ready, we are prepared. And as you said too, that thaw is good to have, but preparedness is also the right way to go because the Chinese and the Indian military Though there has been some disengagement, we've seen four sectors where the disengagement has happened over the last four years after the 21 rounds of talks and 31 rounds of uh, border negotiations and other talks. However, this is Sikkim is the area like Ladakh and Sikkim region, Depsok and uh, other areas where the disengagement still hasn't happened. Both the militaries are on a high alert. We are entering the fourth winter, which is we know uh, given the terrain and the weather is the most difficult part to actually maintain or actually 
we do border patrolling. India, over the last four years, five years, have been denied patrolling about 20 regions where they used to patrol before April 2020, before the whole Galwan incident took place. So given that logic, obviously, as you said, toy is good, but obviously it's also showing that we are prepared. We also know that the defense minister will be there tomorrow in order to take care, look after what are the preparedness on ground and do a ground right. check. He's also inaugurating a lot of border uh, roads and border roads and bridges and other things. Of course, infrastructure is continuing. And let me tell our viewers that yes. there are two specific areas and issues on which uh, there is there is still a major difference of opinion. One is, of course, creation of temporary camps uh, by the Chinese at Demchok. And second being the specific Chinese deployments at Depsak. Those remain. And that's essentially the most thorny issues. And Ambassador, uh, let me ask you this, uh, Ambassador Shashank, that uh, while these, these preparedness is happening, this messaging is also being sent out to China. All of this is happening at a time when uh, India is also increasing its engagements with China's neighbors. So all of that needs to be connected uh, in terms of the larger message that India is sending out to Beijing. Well, actually, in dealing with an important neighbor like China, we have taken into account the feelings of the other Asian countries. So we are constantly involving ourselves in consultations with them. Secondly, we also have organizations where China and India are both members. So therefore, we will have the SCO, we'll have the BRICS, and so, so, so many other, and RIC. So we have so many other organizations. We have to see what actually is the reaction of the Chinese that on the basis of whatever are the views of the other Asian countries and India, and the views that the, these organizations, where they want to improve relations among the member countries. So we just have to wait and see. Point is that we have to make a very clear cut uh, statement on the ground that we will be quite well prepared and take whatever actions required to be taken to protect our interests. But at the same time, we are uh, quite well prepared also to carry out consultations and communications with the Chinese people in whatever other forums we can do that. All right, Ambassador Shashank uh, and, uh, and Gunjan, thank you so much for speaking to me on uh, India Global.